Hello everybody, welcome to, oh a riot, um, the CCL Season 45 Round of 64 match between Poonbot and his unexciting Bretonian team, and Sintane, former champion with Wood Owls, uh, in the booth with me is Purple Chest, hello. Hello Jimmy, uh, what a ooh, tea break quickie we have for you here, so if you've only got 20 minutes on your work break or something, this is your perfect YouTube. Um, a terrible bird team, which are also a terrible race. They're going to get quickly humbled by a fairly reasonable what our team coached by a very good coach. Um, so strap in, don't blink. <laughs> and uh, don't feel you've got to be in for the long haul. This one not likely to be a nerve tingling all the time. Yeah, this looks like it should be. It should be wrapped up relatively easy by Sindane in normal time. Takes the blitz on the on the dirty player there is a there is a uh, bribe for Pwnbot so you could argue he could have protected that he's oh god Pwnbot's gone for the uh, gone for the false the false defense hasn't he uh, chevrons is like the canoe chevrons that don't protect anybody <laughs> it's completely undefended but it's like it does does defend the center of the field a little more it's actually harder to push deep into a central cage as elves against this version of the chevrons so if you really aren't frightened by them, you really want to defend your central area from a page that quickly forms there and scores on turn two. It's a setup I might consider for that and then do a better one instead. Yes, I would never do this. I would never consider this. But, you know. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's its one real shape. That That's the only advantage that shape confers. Well, there you go, then. That's a, that I'm aware of. I mean, I'm sometimes wrong. It was the 80s, I think, last time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the Bretts are uh, you know, rearranging some of the deck chairs on this Titanic in front of these elves. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's no mighty blow, is there? There's only three guard, I think. Yeah. There's not They've got a couple of this guy's agility good. ups. Yeah, he's, he's alright, isn't he? Yeah. They've got a strong one. That's yeah. not terrible. Yeah. He's got two good players. And meanwhile, you know, neither of them are as good as a rookie wood, a rookie war dancer. No, of course not. <laughs> That's a stupid thing, isn't it? Even rookie war dancers are ridiculous. And then he's got two dancers with four skills, and obviously yeah. Daryl had the in, the absolutely insane dancer. Lemon Rust does raise a very good question, Jim. I and mean, we've been describing this as a wood elf team. Can we even describe it as a wood elf team <laughs> with these wood war dancers without any stat ups? I, yeah, that's the funny thing, isn't it? Like, they're so boring. Like, a double yeah. and three normals and four no uh, No, they've both got a double and three normals. Easy yeah. to tell that by looking at the colour of the icons because they are colour-coded by the skill category, which does seem like a rather obvious way to categorise, uh, you know, if you're going to colour-code them, then maybe it's the, you know, the way they're actually organised in the game would, would be a way to do it, but not if you're making Blood Bowl 3. But anyway, um, yeah, it's easy to spot that they've got one double and three normals, on, but it's just not that exciting, is it? It's really not no, exciting. It's not exciting, but I mean, I do see what you mean, Jim. The system that I've been using to think about and plan my players for the entire of my 30 years playing Blood Bowl actually visually represented through colours. Seems a simple, obvious and easily recognisable way to delineate the skills. Yeah. Um, but other more fanciful, more colourful, childishly drawn um, bad ways are probably available. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> who, who doesn't think of Grab being an orange and purple skill and <laughs> just the same way as Stunty? I mean... <laughs> watch it. I'm fairly confident you'll get used to it. <laughs> hey! Perfect. <laughs> Oh dear. The elves looking at this wall of standing there wondering how the hell they're going to win this game. Bretonians have decided to not really care. Yep. Some of them have dropped back to keep the ball safe and far enough away that, I don't know, if there's an earthquake and suddenly <laughs> half the elves fall over, the Bretonians can't get to the ball. Meanwhile, they're sniping the occasional Bretonian hoping to get up on numbers. <laughs> yeah. um, I actually don't hate Juggernaut. On, on the dancer, but I would have it after Mighty Blow. I'd still take Mighty Blow first, but Juggernaut's quite good in terms of you don't get stuck on people and then have to like yeah. get away from them, and, and obviously helps the one turn a little bit. Uh, yep. And yes, there is no tackle at all on the Bretts. That was the biggest thing about the Bretts that I forgot to mention. Like I, I saw them, I I was looking at this to see which one I should do live, and I saw that the, the Bretts had no tackle whatsoever, and I was like, oh dear, oh dear God. <laughs> so yeah, it looks like Pawnbot's gone to the Dio school of. 
just put the players in the right squares and you won't need tackle. <laughs> Let's see how effective that is. Uh, I have a little wager with myself that it's going to be not very. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't even have frenzy, known often as the poor man's tackle. Yeah. He's got he's got Wrestle, space. which is like the really poor man's tackle. Yes, that's the pauper's tackle, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, my response has always been, I, yes, I'd rather have the rich man's tackle, uh, which is, of course, tackle. Yeah. I feel every team can use at least one. Yes. Yeah, yeah you, you should have at least one, for sure. Okay, so we have got rid of an elf. That's um, good help. Yep. We didn't get sent off for it, so that's good. <laughs> I mean, elf removal is the answer here. We, we joked about it, but of course there is always a way that, that the team can win. The lack of tackle is huge here, though. So the way to win is you have to get elves down. And when they are, they're removed so that you can get the multiple hits on the blotches that it takes to really take blotch down without tackle. Well, do you know how you do? You know how you do that, of course. You mark these players with a uh, shadowing, a shadowing uh, peasant, and then they w they won't be able to get away from you, and you'll be able to get to punch them. Brilliant. Work. Um, <laughs> in the same sense that when my son says he wants to replace his arms with helicopter blades and become an attack helicopter, I tell him it's possible. <laughs> There you go. Someone once told me that they thought Coldplay would make an album that wasn't tedious <laughs> and didn't sound like beige wallpaper. <laughs> and I, I have to agree that that can't see the future. That is possible. <laughs> um. Oh dear. Woodies have effectively three players removed. Yeah, that's true, but I mean, the the the, uh, the birds have two removed, and you can still use the tree right to cage up. Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. If we're going to get back to some Blood Bowl talk, whilst Blood Bowl fails to happen in front of us, the tree, the good Wood Elf players will still use a rooted tree um, in terms of how they sweep around it, in terms of where they push forwards, in terms of they will side swap and use the tree as they do that as the sort of pivot around which they swap. It's still a good, strong, safe point. And if you can tempt any of their team anywhere near it, you'll also see them try and push players onto the tree, of course. Yep. So it's tackle zone, it's almost twice the size of other players because you don't want to be, unless you're a sidestepping blodger, within two squares of the tree. If you can help it. Yes. Oh, well there you go, that was a big foul. That was Makes huge. I think you would take the sending off going in, but of course the bribe means... With two elves fouled out and no Bretonians gone yet to fouling. Yeah, stick around. Gets the power here though with Mighty Blow, huge hit. It's the best player on the team. Doesn't get him. No. But he is about to use the tree to do things. No, no, he's not. He's gonna, he's gonna run. He's gonna run with a line or. He is. He's. Full on potatoing. This doesn't look like it's going to work, Jim. It doesn't look it? necessary. No. <laughs> I thought. What? Okay, quick little go for it to cover something that you didn't need to do that's now risky. Mm, and another really couple of go for it's there to tag the player that would have sacked you otherwise. Okay, well, I suppose that's sort of alright. Sort of? A bit weird though, yeah, it did feel like panic. It's a bit odd, isn't it? But he is getting very low on players. Yeah, he so is low on players, yeah. Panicking about that. And with the dirty player still on the field, you know, the move of every elf to the other side of the tree is is quite good defensively, isn't it? Yeah. And there's another one going. Oh Jesus, wow. <laughs> well now we have to move forwards and bang it in, don't we? We're looking at a side cage and bang it in. Yep. And considering we're facing the whiz. Yeah, could be dodgy. You should think about this move guy uh, as a scoring threat, maybe, eh? Pull and bottom. Yeah, yeah, absolutely he should. This number's up and with a wizard in hand. I mean, either the elves have to push through and score. Well, I think that's the wrong direction, Jim. I agree with you. 
I mean, this 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 is this is the eternal dilemma, though, isn't it, of the uh, of the canoring threat because <laughs> because that makes it stronger down that side, but. It's also like some people over 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 uh, over yeah, as well, spot. don't they? So if and if now he's dipped the other here, side, allowing the elves to use their pace to become their numbers advantage by moving to the other side of the field. Yeah. With another little sexy handoff, does it work fail though? Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Oh. Squeaky bum time. He's only just in range, isn't he? Now, what was quite sexy about that, of course, was the handoff happened directly behind the tree. If that had snaked, the tree would have quite likely have been involved in protecting the ball on the ground. Um, so, some good wood elf play. Considering the tough spot he suddenly found himself in, I think that's quite a good response. Yep. Ooh. Wow, very Bolt's rowdy with the, the whiz. Bolt the dancer. Yeah, I think that's the right bolt, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Because you sidestep, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Same. And the ball carrier has sod all skills. Well, he's got dodge. He's got dodge. But I still think it's worth getting rid of the blodge stepper. Because, yeah, if you, you like. Because you haven't got tackle, you can't mm. move the blodge stepper out of the way, can no, you? So you have to bolt the blodge not stepper reliably. and hit him, yeah. yeah. And also, you can, you can power him here and he might get in the crowd. That's what you're hoping for, I thought. Yep, that's where he that's goes. Your best chance for recovery is is the crowd. Yep. Doesn't get it. Though. Oh, instead it's handed to the dancer. Well, that was always possible. There is a weak diagonal here, though, that he can go through, which he does. You mean that little gate that was there, Jim? <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> yes, that little gate. <laughs> <laughs> so he was able to go through. <laughs> he was able to go through this that didn't really do anything and uh but yeah he doesn't get the scoring threat absolutely and if it, you know if only he had a scoring threat because now the elves can try anything here with impunity yep. he does go for the uphill block and yep how costly is it that this movement guy did not move up there last turn yeah it's it's i mean it is okay because if you stop Wood Elves from scoring, you feel like that's a huge achievement. And I, I don't want to undervalue that. That's great. You're really well done. Um, the right fouls, really aggressive strategy from the start was the only way to cope with the lack of tackle. And it, it, it has, it's paid off. Um, so I celebrate all of that. But yeah, it, it was so hard to think on top of that. You know, can I really thin this by one or two and actually have a threat myself? He should have done it. You're not wrong. But I, I completely forgive it. Yeah, and it, it, think it, it, of the adrenaline at this point. You've stopped a much better Wood Elf team. I mean, he's you used his ways to do it, them. hasn't he? But and, and yeah. you know, at the end of the day, it did make his defence stronger, right? Yeah. If he hadn't moved that, yeah. may, maybe some Dane slips down the sideline and and you know, and stalls out there and, and scores. So you know, it's, it's yeah. certainly uh, it's certainly fair enough that he that he didn't do that. But I mean, that is the I don't know how to red hair. I literally don't know how to. <laughs> Amazingly, Cyanide made a shit game. <laughs> Aha, thank you. <laughs> Some very, very key KOs there. Yeah, brutal, brutal KO recoveries for the... Uh... Yep. One in four for the Woodies. But... Uh Two out of two for the Bretonians. Oh, I thought he had. I thought he had a bib, but he didn't. Yeah, no bib. So just lucky. Look a dog gets two out of two. Wow. Oh wow, this is all of a sudden looking really bad for Sindane, isn't it? Yeah, suddenly this is all going the Bretonians' way. Glorious. Unbelievable. No, I won't give in. Now Popebot still slouches as a coach. He has qualified for a couple of challenges before this. I will defend. Um, with a variety of different teams. This is Insert not like something a specialist on brands that I'm aware of. So, no stranger to these environments. And I do think he coached a good first half. I think he had a, a plan which was, you know, had decent outcome options. And he pushed through with it. Yeah, I mean, he's done great, hasn't he? With <laughs> not <Yeah>. zero tackle. <laughs> I mean, he's got incredibly lucky that he hasn't had a lot more sendings off for those fouls. But they, you know, they have worked. They've achieved what he wanted. 
Right, and uh, thank you very much, Satterfield, for staying fantastic for 52 glorious months, 13 whoo beaver pregnancies. Absolutely glorious. Uh, but yeah, this is... This is actually, this is actually winnable now, isn't it? As, as much as obviously you would rather get the counter score with the wizard, that's the thing, isn't it? Like the, you know, like that makes the Canoring threat a bit better because he knew that he was probably going to have to use the wizard to stop the score. So that, like, I, right. I think that is what pushed me into yep. getting the scoring threat. Maybe, maybe yep. when maybe it looked a bit too uh, optimistic. I think that, that I think that's the thing. If if you, if you know that you're probably going to use the wizard to stop the score, then give yourself an outlet to. to yeah, to then give yourself. It. Yeah, put all your eggs into that basket as well, and say, well, this is this is what I bought for this game. So let's see if it can win me the game, not just stop the threat. Yeah. I, I yeah, I get that. I'd love to think I would have spared someone as that scoring threat. Yeah. Um, but I, I, you know, I've been in that position where suddenly you stop wood elves and you're so full of yourself for having done that, you just don't want anything to risk that. <laughs> yeah. So hard to do. Um, Enzo, that's interesting. I, I didn't know he was capped at 120. I'd been told he was capped at 150 and had chosen Igor. Um, in that case, I still think you should probably have got rid of a thrall if there was a spare one and had the whiz. Yes. I still think the whiz is essential to take that 86 dancer down and then kick it in the face. I still think any plan attacked that dancer was how you won that game. Yes. Uh, unless Dadle suddenly went completely crazy. Yeah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you fit it. See, that's the thing. That's the thing, PC. You failed to, uh, you failed to calculate the equity of, <laughs> of Dadle just not just, scoring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did. That was, that wasn't something I, I'm used to factoring in, but perhaps I should have done. Yeah. Very tight. Oh, I see. Dale cut to stop it, and then he wasn't willing to cut another thrall to get back to the whiz. I see. So I had been informed that he had a whiz, and, and Dale cut to stop it. Well, that makes more sense with Igor. Um, I still then wouldn't have had Igor. I'd have had a bribe. Wow, this, isn't it? Isn't this a bit weird from Sundar? Like, I mean, is this trap space? I I want to go here. Yeah, me too. Um, it's also pleasantly away from the tree. It's, yeah, yeah, that's the killer, isn't it? Getting away from yeah. the tree. I mean, really, that's, other than stabilising, which we've done, we've got the ball and we've got people around it. Job two on this, I suppose, is what I would call super stabilising. So stabilising as I want to be stabilised, which is as far away from the damn tree as I can, so I can deal with it when the lone dancer comes for me. Um, and you've sort of offered me that. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. I'd be doing exactly what... Uh, Homebot is doing here. Mm. Homebot, own bot. I, I'm not willing to call a P and O. It's Poonbot to me. <laughs> Poonbotties. <laughs> <laughs> Although, having said that, clearly I'm fickle because I am prepared to call him Leet. I don't do the uh, the day vote of calling him 1337. <laughs> yeah, I call him Leet, yeah. Do you realise that makes us old? Yeah, well... Lead, lead speak was 20 years ago, Jim. God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I mean, we are old, whether we like it or yeah, not. Yeah, we are old. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. I, uh, I went to the opticians the other day, and she said, you are 40 now, which <laughs> which doesn't mean you're old, but it means your eyes are different. And I was like, it sure does feel like I'm old. <laughs> He's shadowed! He's used the shadowing. Yes! <laughs> I, I, I quite like that. It gives him a nice chainable shape. It puts someone onto the dancer. I mean, why not? It gives you maybe not a huge hit on the dancer, but I'd still be using that to hit the dancer. Yes. Shadowing. Okay. Perhaps not with that not being a power, but. Yeah. But shadowing, it worked. It actually it worked. It did. Lovely. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> And into a better position, even if he doesn't hit anything from there. Just tying those elves up with that disposable piece of crap is good. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a peasant with block and shadowing. <laughs> Genius. It does need thick skull to really polish it, Jim. Yeah. As yeah. it's going to live on the line of scrimmage and take hits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, there's a dancer with shadowing, but he's KO'd. <laughs> but he's only got movement eight shadowing. This is the real. This is the real one, isn't it? But he. <laughs> oh, the tree's now all lonely, oh. and the really important uh, 
peasant lineman is not only holding those elves, but it's also on the beautiful diagonal between the tree and the ball. It's doing such a good job. Oh, he, he didn't die. No, but even when it's, it's even still in the tree's way, it's great. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, that's that was weird letting him get up there. It really is. Um, I guess if I'm looking for a positive, it has pushed him onto an edge. And elves never really mind attacking a cage this near a sideline. It gives the the other team a lot less ways of responding, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe he thought he's got so few players. If he just tries to spread out, then you know he's not going to defend yeah. very well anywhere. Whereas at least yeah. here he put he forces him somewhere, and then he can try and shut him down. But it's yes, less elves are able to to hem in that cage here than if it was central, aren't they? Yes, it's like the three hundred, isn't it? It's a little, <laughs> and it could genuinely give him the shot next turn of having a pop of this ball, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah, he could get himself into trouble here with a. Uh... It was such a passive turn, though, that the, all three of the Bretonian cards have managed to come and, and sort of monster around this ball, which is not the shape you want to attack. Oh, this is a long way to go, isn't oh, it? This is very rowdy, Jim. Yeah, this is a long way to go. I don't like this very much. I mean, I'm all about seizing space. That's not unknown to people, but this is very, very far away from the rest of your team. Yeah, I mean, getting the cage there was never going to be tough. Well done. A single go for it. We're here. Excellent. Problem is, you've now got a stall there for three more turns. Yeah, and you've, you've, your completely, team is split. Miles away. you've completely split your team, yeah. And even against this few elves, I don't like the Bretonians to hold out for longer than. Well, that really. Longer than that. I think I'll have to score next turn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're going to have to score next turn, yeah, surely. Not sure the second GFI is worth it. Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting point. Because he's got guard, and so he, we would give him a free uphill. Lodge steps, so to some degree, inviting him around the corner into the cage might help keep the cage more stable, weirdly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's only got one reroll left. Yeah, good shout, good yeah. shout, just one GFI. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that was probably unneeded. Yeah. Again, very understandable why you'd want this shape, but look at this, it's, it's elves all over you. And I know the rest of the Bretonians can now arrive, because there aren't enough elves to hold them there and the tree can't do it alone, but oh, it's not. It's pretty horrible, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty horrible. Ooh, Ooh. that was a big fail, though. That was. Now, there is a shot to side swap, isn't there? Oh, it's dodgy. It's dodgy. It's horrible though, because he just can't deal with the, the tackles. The tackle blodge step, can he? Because it's like. No, he's, no, he'll have he's to got nothing. Or hand off it. And that's not fun. But he has to anyway. So does he score or stall, or does he score? Because he has to do that. I think he's probably just. Well, he's, I don't know. I guess you punch him and see what happens. <laughs> There's so many worse places you can go, Jim. I mean, you can wrestle him, but it's not—it's not reliable, is it? No. Oh, okay, he just rolls it. Brilliant. Yeah, just do that. Yeah, I mean, it's a pal, isn't it? It's a fifty-five percent. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Just runs away. Particularly with the dancer down. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty decent. But. I mean, it's an, it's an incredible, okay, it's huge, huge dodge to get the, uh, to stop the incredibly easy 2D. Even then, 2D without, oh no, because it was with tackle, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, the tackle was a little harder to get there, but you could have got the tackle there. Yeah. What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? Just try and just try and put pressure on. I mean, it's really good time for now, isn't it, for Pong? But there's this. only there's only two turns. I mean, okay, you don't want to leave the Woody's two turns, but even if he scores here and leaves him a two turn, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. You really want to sneak one more turn out of this, but it's so difficult. I mean, he took some chances to do it last turn, but I quite liked what he did. Yeah. I'm not sure I like this hit. I would have rather hit one of these. To like mm. get stuff on him, really like, get onto it, yeah. Because yep. now he, he's got this area to to fall back. Yeah, in, I think he's it? going around the corner with this one. Yeah, there we go. That's he 
figures that'll do it. I I don't think that'll be enough. Especially not when you can just stick a shadowing guy on him. <laughs> hey! Well, after a four plus dodge, yeah. Yeah. Oh no, because it's on another Bretonian. Yes, it well, this, 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 those. It's the spare yeah. numbers coming around the back, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, right. exactly. That's what I'm saying. That, that, that this yeah, space right. was here, and these were just easily getting into it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No, they did need to be that. It's that midfield one on the bloodstone. That one need to be taken down. Look, shadowing guy, shadowing guy gets the removal. A hero, hero of the game. I mean, you could have easily one would but what's the point in one ding with like a dude without block or wrestle, or, uh, you know, block or dodge or anything? Oh no, he had dodge, didn't he? The guy who could have hit him was actually five with only dodge, without you know, without block or tackle. So you know who that person is, Jimmy? You'll get this reference. You're old enough. <laughs> okay. That person. It's not. It's not Steve. It's not Gascoigne. It's not Beckham. It's not even Lineker. It's none of your fancy dads. That peasant, that Steve Butcher, with a, with a bandage around his head, bleeding profusely in the 92 semi-final. Yeah. It's a journeyman having his day, having his game, <laughs> and I celebrate him. I was going to say he was Milner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. I'll do, deal with that. He gets the pill. Oh, that's such a shame. Turns out it really didn't work because of was... Yeah. And he's got the ball. Puts in a reroll for the pickup. That's interesting, isn't it? Yep. I, I mean, I think he's right. I think ball in hand is where it needs to be on that lovely blood step dancer. So hard to get down that you don't have tackle. Yep. And he's got no scoring threat, so overtime at best. Right. It's all in the hands of our <laughs> lock. <laughs> Shadowing <laughs> peasant. If he can get a power on this dog, so he's almost on fire. Block shadowing, let's go. You could be our hero, baby. <laughs> if only he could hit him with with tackle, but he can't. But he can hit him with... Re no, he's probably too far away for wrestling. <laughs> there we are, we've cancelled the assist that made it a red dice. Here comes the guard. There's oh, the guard, baby. we've made it two dice. Don't re-roll him, though! Oh, he doesn't get him, Jim. You don't re-roll there, do you? Do you? Because, like, how hard is it for Range 4 to get the score without any re-rolls and, like, after the... Fool. Quite hard. Oh, but then you've got the Blitz as well, I guess, yeah. But, oh, it's just hard, yeah. And I failed to. Um. That's the roll. Direction of pushing him, but never mind. I, I, I would have kept the reroll. Like, you know, it's different if you if you like rerolling a three plus to score or something. But um, I feel oh, like we're gonna see overtime. Yeah, I feel like you've got to play for overtime there and keep your reroll. Sexy. So there you go. We thought this wouldn't be overtime. <laughs> Somehow it is. How could it possibly have been? <laughs> well. The six KOs is a clue. <laughs> but it's kind of crazy, isn't it? It's kind of crazy that no tackle, no tackle birds have taken it all the time. Wait, well, Shadowing's worked! Shadowing worked on the oh, move! I love it! I love it! <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I it's like Ronnie Radford scoring an FA Cup goal. It's, it's, it's just a beautiful thing that you could watch forever. What a hero that peasant is. Um, if we trace, trace it back, Jim, I think we're right. I think he pushed forward too early. It separated his team. It went, instead of being on top of the L's for numbers, he was suddenly defending it when he was already starting to see the dice turn against him. I, I think a stronger, more solid, slower move forwards could have seen this in a much better position. Yeah. We'll never know, but I, I will go to my grave stating I think that was the way to get that drive done. I'm sure you will, PC. I can imagine you thinking about this game of Pongbot's random Brutes and St. Dane's random what else for the rest of your life. <laughs> I will. <laughs> my deathbed, I'll say, I, I love the space, but he seized it too soon. Um, and those will be my final words, Jim. March 2022, what a day. <laughs> what a day. 7th of March. <laughs> Never forget that day. The sun it's, was shining. it's on my mind, team man. I've got a letter in my bedside table that states what my final words are, and I should go and amend it this evening. <laughs> oh, dear.
Damn it. <laughs> but yeah, unbelievable, isn't it? It should be a win now. Yeah, they've got the ball. They, they can, they, you know, there's very few else to stop them. And yeah, they've got, they've got a shot. They can score any time they want. They you know they don't have to stall it out or anything this time. No, oh. no, it's it's still absolutely their game to lose. Yeah. Which is oh, so rarely said about Brett's that I think <laughs> maybe that's the problem. Yeah. Brett's without tackle. <laughs> Put them in the right squares, and there's no problems. <laughs> Oof. Oh, sure don't. After the Woodhill <laughs> fiasco of earlier, Dadle's, uh, not Dadle, Dio's sort of smugness is going to be visible from other planets. <laughs> Very soon, other galaxies. <laughs> He's here going for it. PC's current last words clear my browser history. <laughs> If you don't have a friend good enough that you can trust them to come around and delete your browser history and hard drive when you die, then you're a sadder man than I. <laughs> I was best man at his wedding, he's best man at mine, and we both know each other's passwords. <laughs> <laughs> I got his secrets, he's got mine, it'll be fine. <laughs> I'm telling you what, you know what? <laughs> Daedal's, Daedal should really get a coaching session now, shouldn't he? <laughs> it looks like you know that you should score on turn eight. <laughs> but it doesn't look like that you know that you have to score on turn eight. <laughs> Tell him for free, Jib. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Daedal. I'm sorry. So you should spend the entire half planning and focusing on scoring on turn eight and on turn eight. You should fucking do it. <laughs> oh dear, I'm sorry. Scoring is good. You should do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good place. Of things in... <laughs> oh dear. Scoring on turn eight is a high EV play. It definitely is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Problem was space was the coach, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Well, he's he stabilised, isn't he? Like, there's not a lot of L's to disrupt the stabilisation, so, yep, here we are, whole teams together. Yep. Looking very strong. I mean, there was very little the L's could have done about that. I would have loved to throw at least one elf into the backfield, put a little bit of fear into the turn ordering for the Bretonians. But it's it's so hard to do. Yeah. Yeah, really, really hard with so few players. Yeah. And Pone Spot's got a plan. He's sticking to it. These fouls keep raining in. Oof. 11 11 as well, so not even sent off. Brutal. Never has one, <laughs> never has one dirty player had such an impact. <laughs> Well, the peasants have very much been the star of these uh, these Bretonian turns, haven't they? Yeah, they have. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, Jim, that's it. There you go. Now this is lovely. Look at these wood elves pushing uh, something onto the tree for a nice hit. Yeah. Lovely shape there. Made that line of three into the T, yeah. and used it to uh, to get that lovely chain. <laughs> Oh wow! Okay, we are seeing some full rowdy uh, base, 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 base. Love that trick move. That was really sexy stuff. Um, and we've decided that we can take this hit as the war dancer because we just need to stick on that knight and stop the ball going instantly to uh, lose us the game. Yep. And so I think that's right, but I think it's also ballsy. You can see a lot of Wood Elf coaches would rather. You know, hope for the handoff fail or think they'll strip it off it next turn or something. I have much preferred that. And it worked. You know, we got the one in nine. Yep. Oh dear me. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Chip, as a space cadet. It's it's his record is unarguable, isn't it? You are his buddy, Jim. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, fails the one in nine. So again, a bit of a team split, but a bit different when you're when you're leaving a tree in the dust, isn't it? That's uh, that's all. Yeah, and I mean, because of the nuance of blood bulging. To be honest, yes, I would sacrifice two players just to keep the tree there. Yeah. I would desperately hope I could suck at least one more punch off an elf just to keep it stuck over there. Yep. And if I do, I'd consider that work really well done. But yes. no, the elves look too savvy for that. Oops, and Dane's not falling for that. No. <laughs> Fair enough, Jay, buddy. <laughs> don't, don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah, imagine, imagine looking at full forces. History and how drive. Jesus. I can't even imagine. Thank God I can't even imagine what's on there. <laughs> yeah, I don't even. I, I'm thankful that I'm in the same situation, Jim. <laughs> well, he's coming back. Coming back central. Like, going for a kicks win is okay here because you're still Brett and you're still a bit crap. <laughs> <laughs> so just trying to survive is okay, isn't it? Like you know, turtling a bit is is totally fine because you can easily get yourself into into trouble with all these blood steppers. Absolutely, and the problem is if those two dancers get into your cage, there's not much you can do about it. Yeah. And you don't have the numbers anymore to really let a couple of wrestlers go down because next turn the dancers oh. just get back up and mass the monster you. Look at that! The crowd goes wild. That was gets the, huge, Jim. Four huge. plus dauntless, wasn't it? Four yeah, plus lovely, dauntless. lovely four plus there. <laughs> and banged on it because it was the blitz. Yeah, what a play! And unfortunately, there are just too many elves still. Five of them. Look at that! What a <laughs> horde! <laughs> But the problem, as we've overstated, uh, is the lack of tackle of these two evil dancers. Well, the problem is the shadowing. Oh, boo. Fails to shadow the dancer. <laughs> Unthinkable, Jim. I mean, and, and how foolish to come out of the position that way where the shadowing had the chance to ruin it. <laughs> yeah. It's been pretty massive in overtime so far, really dominating this position. Yeah. Here we go, you can get back. Yeah, we can cut back to where we want to be, which is near our beautiful uh, shadowy peasant. He makes the blitz. Oh, it doesn't get the knockdown. Never lucky. Yeah, the tree standing up is sad. It could have easily he could have easily rooted or stayed down, couldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's gotta do a two four to get back up. It, it could have easily stayed there and uh, They had a pretty shocking first couple of halves, so the fact that it's been useful in overtime, it was probably due a couple of all right things. Yeah. But yeah, good stuff. Getting getting forward, pretty protected. The old Y cage, or uh... yeah, I really like dropping that peasant once the cage is fairly safe. Dropping that peasant on the uh, the blood step elf that's there. Again, I'm happy to tank a hit from that elf because it holds it in place. I don't want it running up ahead of my advance. Yeah. It's much more likely to dodge off another. It's only a one in thirty six. Add all those little three percent together, and suddenly. You can go. And in fact, it draws the blitz, which is a great use for that person. Yep. You'll be quite happy with that stun. <laughs> yep. All of your key pieces that you really want to be moving are, are still able to do so. So, As long as your block shadowing guy is there, you're all right. Oh, look, they have indeed put a lovely blood stepping curtain in front of this advance. <laughs> You and your curtains, PC. <laughs> well, it's a, it's, a, it's a line of things that they've drawn in front of something else. How is that not a curtain? <laughs> and it's not like two layers deep, which in which case I might use the phrase wall. Mm. Why not screen? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah. It just feels a little imperial for me. <laughs> Okay, so blood, uh, Dauntless not firing this time, but the uphill we got away with, and then we just dodge off with our blodge piece. Classic. I like this. I like that he's got the handoff threat now as yeah. well, so that yeah, me too. he can't just wall off. 
because we're getting to the point where we're going to try something anyway, aren't we? Yeah. Um, or do we, as you said, there is taking it to kicks. The equity is equal. Yeah. Those of you on the edge of your equity seats. <laughs> should be one ahead, though, shouldn't he, Pumbuck? Because he should have not wasted that re-roll and then he looked into an extra one. So he yes. should be on two right now. There is a gaping hole currently. There oh, really what, is. What? Okay, he's keeping all that. Oh. Okay. Oh, there's a gaping hole. I think you've got to. I think you've got to move right into this. This time we absolutely space. do seize that space massively and aggressively. Yes. And this time he absolutely is. Yeah. Okay. No. I mean, well, it wouldn't matter anyway. Like, okay, it's turn twenty-three, but it wouldn't matter if this is turn twenty. You still take it because you just don't care about stalling, do you? But also, that everyone can come yeah. with it that is able to move, and that's more than it was last time. The ones that are stuck are stuck up that end, so actually we're reinforcing them by heading up that way. It, it's just, there's, there's all the downsides aren't there this time. Yep. Wow. That's good enough though, isn't it? Because it gets, it gets the hero of the hour. Yeah. <laughs> it, it means the most important player on the field is back in action where we want to. <laughs> Trap space initialized, yeah. <laughs> this is next level if this is trap space. <laughs> Ooh. And having finally controlled the tree through one of our bloodstepping pieces, we can now leave it behind, out of range. Yep. And we're finally in a decent position once again to win this game. Oh, uphill, oh, up at the turn. I'm not sure about that. Why did, what did that achieve? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. If it was a POW, it gave you a one die option on the ball. Yeah. Expecting a POW off two reds. Not that way. No. Expecting to move it, fine, but moving it didn't achieve anything. No, and you couldn't follow. You couldn't follow to like get an no. assist in, like, so the the fend was actually relevant there for the incredible scenes, yeah. Yeah, that, that hasn't again doing its job right to the very final action. And the Bretonians go through well. Jim, can Bretonians win Chalice once again? <laughs> Probably, and as you said, Dio's smugness can be seen from space here. The International Space Station will be looking down at Dio's smugness because <laughs> Brett's won without any tackle by putting players in the right square. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I absolutely want to repeat that what was key there was the foul strategy. Any elf I get down, any elf I am going to kick in the face. Um, I'm long on the bench. It's my best way of removing them as I don't have tackle. But I, if I get them down, they're not getting back up. It was a high roll strategy, but it paid off. Paid off beautifully. Uh, well done. Yeah, and the wizard. Yeah, the wizard was great. So yeah, congrats, Pawn Duck. Commiseration, Sindane. Um, thank you very much, Purple Chest. As always, absolutely glorious having you on here. <laughs> very kind of you. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.